worked with me, uh, Geelong footballer Mike Witzers, uh, two-time categories medalist, um, and which is all the more impressive, really, given that you only started football what six years ago. Yeah, seven years ago. Seven yeah. years ago. Yeah. yeah. So pretty impressive. Um, prior to this, Mike competed on the national athletic circuit and even had an international stint at one point. My last season, went overseas. Yeah. Had a few races, it was pretty fun, yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. So to provide some um, awareness, I guess, around the um, disordered eating patterns that seem to be on the rise in, in a lot of sports. Um, so is it, and you know, full blown eating disorders as well, is it something that you've ever battled with personally or know anyone, I guess, in close contact, obviously not having to name anyone, but mm. um, that you've sort of experienced? Um, I haven't personally uh, been affected by any eating disorders. Um, uh, through football, either I've, I've not had any teammates go through that. Um, we place a huge importance on food. We've got our own dietitian that places a huge impor importance on uh, food and its performance, helping us uh, with peak performance. Um, I, I saw it a little bit um, in athletics when I was involved with that. A few of the distance runners um, I did, and, and it's mainly just seeing that, uh, yeah, it might be that they're looking very drawn, um, very skinny, and they, they might be going through that, whether that's the, the stress of, of actually performing and, and doing the high Ks or actually um, the stresses of trying to compete at that elite level. Um, I think it's fortunate enough, um, I grew up with, um, obviously, a good education from my parents about the importance of eating, um, and um, my coaches that I had through my athletics career, now football too, are really supportive um, of me as an individual person and an athlete, so there's no pressure on me to uh, look a certain way. There's no pressure on me to, um, yeah, I suppose, not eat, not eat the foods I, I don't want to. Yeah, so, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is something that obviously affects a lot of women, but um, I think it's valuable to have your insight because there are some men, unfortunately, that do also have battles as well. So um, it's certainly good to, to yeah. have that chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I think it definitely is. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I think it starts at the top too. There's, there's coaches um, out there that, that want uh, athletes at a certain uh, playing weight, running weight, whatever it might be. Um, my opinion is you, you're working hard, uh, you're eating relatively healthy and you're working hard, you're running 100, 150 plus Ks uh, when you're training for a middle distance event um, that weekly, you're, you're doing that or uh, with our games pre-season we'll be knocking over 50, 60 K of, of football work and then in games we're running anywhere from 15 to 18 K. So we're burning the energy, it's important to actually get the fuel back in. Absolutely. And um, I think educated coaches to promote that is, is something really important. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Now, I do remember back when you were a runner <laughs> and- uh... Here we go, yeah. <laughs> There was a race in Perth, I think, that you were doing on the national series, and um, you, I remember you tried prawns for the first time yep. ever the night before one of these big races, yep. and you were just totally blase about it, and uh, possibly even read a PB that, that next day. Has that real sort of laid back attitude towards food? Because a lot of people are quite cautious on what they eat sort of pre any big match or big race. Has that really that carefree attitude shaped your sort of behaviour around food, do you think? Um, I remember the race you're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, it, yes and no, it has. Um, uh, so yeah, I did try prawns before that race and ran uh, my PB, it still stands today in the 1500. Um, but I think that was one because I was just, uh, I really enjoy food and it was something different. Uh, I was obviously serious about my athletics, but um, thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll try prawn, I'll try some new food, and I was pretty carefree, but um, also young and, and didn't have the education around that. So I'm not uh, super strict on my diet and my routine within games, but now being educated, as I mentioned, we've got a full, full-time dietitian at the club um, who takes um, a lot of our education classes, especially for the first to three year players, um, about diet, about uh, hydration, whatever it might be. So, since coming to football, being educated, I wouldn't be trying anything new before a game. I'd stick to the foods that I know and stick to the foods um, that I know how my body would react to. So, um, but in saying that, that carefree attitude might have yeah, made me run a few. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's no, interesting. Um, 
Has your eating, obviously you've touched on this already just then, but has your eating behaviours changed really in any other way over time? Or? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, I used to smash sugar back in the day, big time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy eating. It's something that I actually love to do. So if I'm fortunate enough in off season to travel overseas, I'll try and go try and go to some really nice restaurants. I enjoy trying food I haven't tried before. Um, but then again, um, I think because I've now been educated in in my diet, I've I've got that uh, a little bit of a routine down pat of um, the foods I know that I perform well on, the foods that I would probably stay away from. Um, if I'm not in the off season or if I um, don't have a couple of days off um, and I think especially that, that I'm a big believer of the, uh, the week leading into the game the nutrition's done then and then on game day you can't change too much so I've actually changed a little bit I used to try and eat a lot on game day now I'll try and sort of have a big meal in the morning and then just sort of snack depending if it's a night game um, so yeah my behaviours have changed a little bit with that um, but I still cover all the food groups from veggies and salads to passes and the, yeah. More than the occasional pizza too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's important to have that balance though. It sort of gives you the enjoyment and perhaps that's why you haven't really had any issues with eating disorders or disorder type eating patterns. Yeah, so. exactly. And I know, I know that I've, I've done the work and I'm working hard. So then if I do choose to have a pizza, I'm not going to um, feel guilty eating it. If I've chosen to eat it, I'm going to eat it and enjoy it. How has your, the team around you, so, you know, beyond the team here at Geelong, I guess, shaped your um, eating behaviours over time, but also health in general? Yeah, it's a good question. So, I think my parents had a huge, especially my mum had um, a big influence on me as a kid. So, mum was, uh, loves food too, but loves her healthy eating and, and would always cook for us. And um, probably ingrained with me, uh, always having a, a a green with dinner, with any meal, so salad or a veggie. Um, so um, I'm big on salads, I'm big on veggies and getting those servings in. And I think mum's ingrained that in me from a kid that every dinner we'd always have a side serving of that. So if um, I order a meal out and it doesn't come with that, I'll order a side salad or a veggies to, whether that's a, a mental thing, but just want to get a bit of health in. Um, and yeah, apart from that, I've had some uh, good running coaches that have, that have promoted healthy eating, but also um, yeah, just, just promoted um, I suppose eating in general and I've had it, um, I've had the importance of food placed on me from an early stage um, with our Vic teams, with our national teams that we made um, that uh, yeah, food is fuel and you need fuel to perform and um, that's sort of always ingrained into me and I think that's why it's, it's gone a long way in an uh, injury free career too. Um, so not only with athletics but now with football um, I've been injured through knocks or rolling my ankle, landing on feet, whatever, but from a stress-related point, I've never dealt with stress fractures, I've never dealt with soft tissue injuries, probably one because I'm not quick enough to tear a muscle, but <laughs> um, um, two, just because I think I've had that continuity of training and that continuity of, of eating and feeling my body, that it's never been able to break down to get injured, and I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. food certainly does have a huge impact as far as injury prevention, but Obviously, the, the quality of your coaches has a lot to show for that too. It, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does because yeah, you listen. I listen to my coaches more than I listen to my parents. Yeah. Obviously, when I was trying to get serious in athletics too. So, um, mum and dad have come from elite sporting background, but it doesn't mean the children, myself, my brother and sister, are listening to them. We're listening to our coaches. So, yeah. um, I think especially the coaches, it's important that they understand the importance of of food and performance and in sport. And and um, yeah, the healthy eating, eating is obviously important to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now you're also a qualified massage therapist. Do you think as health professionals, or perhaps for those watching this that are you know, parents or coaches or training partners of athletes, is there something that we could be doing um, from any of those um, standpoints in regards to reducing the incidence of disordered type eating patterns or um, you know, just fostering better relationships with food? Yeah, it's a tough one. Um me not having personally experienced it or, or know anyone really close to me that has experienced it, I don't actually know um, what the athlete, what the person's going through. So um, I, could, I could tell them this, this and this, but um, I think until you actually know what they're going through, um, it's, it's hard to uh, offer advice, but I'm sure there's people out there that understand what they're going through and the professionals out there. So um, for me, I think it's always important. Um, again, I've touched on, I've been educated 
the importance of food and performance and how it helps. You can't be an elite athlete if you don't feel your body right. That's one point that me as the athlete have has understood. The other thing is you're, you're a coach um, from the higher ups that organise the, the sporting organisations or the coach that deals with the athletes. I think it's important for them to get educated on not only the, the food side of things, but um, the disorders and the problems that could arise and, and how to um, manage that in the athletes. So <clears throat> whether it's coaches actually doing education courses with professionals that, that deal with athletes or, or having knowledge of people that can help the athlete and, and just pass them on. Um, look, you might be uh, struggling with this, but here's a really good person to talk to. I think that's a, a really good thing. So for me, it's probably just knowledge. So if we take it back um, a little more, a little more lighthearted, yep. I've seen that Kombucha feature pretty regularly yeah. <laughs> in yep. your Instagram stories. Is this... Um, Remedy Kombucha, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Nice one. Thank um, you. <laughs> so is this something, apart from obviously being a sponsor, um, is gut health something that's, I guess, of importance to you that you've made a focus to try and make sure that that's okay or... Is it, you know, just a great option as a beverage? Um, the gut health is a bonus. Yeah, okay. The reason I started drinking kombucha is because I, back in the day, early football career, loved my soft drink. I'm not sure if I've got this off my dad. So my dad's dad used to work for Coke in a Coke factory in South Australia. Yeah. And so dad would come off the court, two, three hour game, come home, smash a one litre bottle of Coke. I'm not sure if that's passed on to me, but I would do similar. So I, I love soft drinks, Sprite, Coke, whatever it might be. So um, yeah, I was drinking too much of it, unhealthy, too much. Um, during games, during halftime breaks, I'll have some Coke, even now. Um, I like the caffeine and the sugar hit. Um, I don't mind it for cramps. I just think it's, a, I think it's a good spark in terms of elite performance, just a little shot of it, whatever it might be. One pre-season, 2014, I had it at half time and I actually came out and felt really fatigued and flat in the game. And I was thinking to myself, what is going on? Like, isn't that meant to spark you up? But I think I'd had too much the whole for the six months before leading up. I was just, my body needed, like I was, it was just, I was just drinking way too much. Yeah. So anyway, I, I found this kombucha. So I initially just started kombucha to get off Coke and get off soft drink. So I really liked the fizziness of it. It tasted a little bit sweet. Um, and that actually helped me help me break off that soft drink cycle of almost a litre a day. Jeez. So now, yeah, um, um, the getting the remedy kombucha is obviously a bonus and I really enjoy it, but um, the kombucha initially was to get off soft drink and I've, I've cut back a lot and got a really good balanced diet with that now. Yeah. Um, and then the obviously the gut health is something I've learnt more over the last couple of years, exploring it. Um, we have, um, we take green powder at the club too for some super immune hits and to help with the the gut health and probiotics, so um, yeah, that's obviously a bonus, but initially it was to get off soft drink. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. something different. Yeah. yeah. Well, while we're on the topic of crazy sugary yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, it's just gone. Has your breakfast improved since uh, your wheat bakes and uh, mountains of sugar and Milo? Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah, I was putting tablespoons of Milo and sugar on wheat bix so it has. I still like the wheat bix so yeah. I'll always have the wheat bix and milk for brekkie, but um, yeah, instead of sugar and Milo, it's probably replaced with strawberries and bananas, which is good. Um, I'm big on hydration too, so I'll make sure I'm drinking lots of water, especially for brekkie when I wake up, and then a coffee too. But um, yeah, the, the, the added sugar to cereal is gone, that's for sure. Good. <laughs> yeah. But again, that's just an uneducated thing that I yeah. didn't realise. And, yeah. um, and perhaps a show of the times too. I mean, yeah. it really wasn't that long ago that we did think Sugar wasn't that bad, mm, really. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, this would only been about eight years ago. So, yeah. um, I've, I've got off the addiction of sugar <laughs> somewhat, which is good. good. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, now, you've touched on briefly that you take a green powder as well. Are there any supplements um, apart from that that you would take, I guess, um, whether it be health purposes or performance purposes? Uh, yeah, we're, we're big on um, uh, giving the players access to supplements to um, vitamins, minerals, whatever it might be um, to help with performance. So um, for me, we're, especially in these colder months and when my skin folds are coming down, um, I try and have my skin use around 40. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we get our skin folds done once a month and once every two weeks. And if I'm 
35, 36, I'm a bit low and probably my immune system's down. So with the immune packs, um, <coughs> we're getting zinc, uh, we're getting um, vitamin C, we're getting probiotic, um, we've, we've got access to the, the green powder, um, which doesn't taste that great, but um, <laughs> it's obviously very healthy for you, just helps with your immune system. All probably things to prevent getting getting sick. Yeah. Uh, we get access to magnesium tablets too, which is great, um, leading into games. Um, so, and then obviously with the protein as well, so coming off the track, um, pre and post gym sessions with access to protein um, for breaking down mon uh, muscles, muscle fibers to help replenish whatever it might be. So we do have all that access to it. And then uh, again, the coaches and the dietitians are big on um, educating the players and then letting the players make their own decisions because we're all individual athletes. So one thing might not be great for another person and so forth. So uh, I've got a little routine down pat with that, um, which yeah, hopefully keeps me healthy, especially during those winter months. Yeah, it's really good that they do do that individualized approach because I think that's often forgotten about in sport. You know, a lot of young athletes in particular will look up to people such as yourself mm. and um, you know try and adopt the same principles but you know what works for you might not necessarily work for the next person. Oh exactly it's 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 so individual um, everyone's diet it's crazy to think that if this diet's working for one person you see them be like oh that diet worked for me because it, it won't <laughs> everyone's so individual so yeah it is it is very individual to the person there's a test that our dietitian got us to do um, just a resting metabolic test. We went in uh, to Deakin Uni for, for 10 minutes and, and tested um, how many calories, which we can turn to kilojoules, how many kilojoules we're burning a day at rest, and the percentage, what you're burning, carbs to fats ratio. So it worked out to be, I was burning about 70% fats to 30% carbs, so, and, and quite high. So I can be on this sort of diet, eat a bit more carbs, whatever it might be, and then you think someone like a Patrick Dangerfield probably couldn't go on my diet because it turns out that he's burning 99% fats to 1% carbs. So carbs just probably don't agree with him and he burns fats like a madman. So um, yeah, to think that one diet works for another athlete, um, I mean, it could, but it's so individual that um, yeah, getting works what getting something that works best for you is, is yeah, probably key to performance, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Now, food-wise, is there a staple dish that you cook at home? Um, I'm not just basic pastas and soups, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't mind a, a carbonara, a minestrone soup's good. Yeah. On the cold months. Yeah. Good old barbecues, all right. Yeah. Always with a salad and veg for sure. <laughs> good. So yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, now pre-game, do you have any little rituals that you've got to sort of, whether it's food-wise or, or otherwise, that you kind of have to eat or do, pretty much? Um, yeah. Again, I'm, I'm not too. Uh, strict with my food routine, whether it's steak, potato and veg the night before or pasta, I'm not too fussed, but I'll just make sure I try and get in probably a, a big brekkie for playing a night game um, of maybe toast with avo, bacon feta, fresh tomatoes, whatever it might be. Um, probably my main routine though is the hydration part of it too, so uh, as I said, I think I've, I've fueled for the week leading into the game, um, so on game day um, I'll make sure I have um, the foods I need, but hydration, I want to make sure I'm hydrated so I'm not cramping in game. Our game goes for two hours of on-field stuff with breaks, so it's almost three hours of, of you need to perform and be up there, so probably the hydration is really important for me at the moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. What about the post-game? Anything that you have to eat to either, I guess, get over the insane amount of work you've just done or as far as recovery tool is concerned? Um, yeah, we'll try and, we'll always have food waiting for us uh, in the rooms after the game. Um, so we'll always have a chef come in and um, might be ham and cheese, toasties, might be some pastas, whatever it might be, um, which is good. We, we got access to protein shakes, so I try and smash a protein straight, shake <coughs> straight after the game and, and then eat a bit. But we just, we've lost so much salt and we've burnt so much, so probably high, high salt foods straight after. And then, um, yeah, especially night games, we don't finish till 10.30, 11 o'clock, by the time you get home it's 11, 30, 12, so if you eat too much, you're probably not sleeping that well, so um, probably the next the next day, the next 24 hours is really important um, from a uh, recovery point of view that we want to make sure we're eating really well the next day um, and getting in the recovery. Yeah, good. So, yeah. yeah. nice. Um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given in regards to um, food performance? Um, 
Best piece of advice I've been given? Um, that's a good question. I don't know, just the education part's good. Uh, I get, the advice I give myself is if I'm gonna eat something not good for me, I'm gonna enjoy it, so enjoy my food. <laughs> but from a, from a performance point of view, just probably um, get the balance right, but get something that you know works for you. Yeah. So if, you, if it's, um, yeah, whatever, pasta, um, cereal banana the next morning, whatever it might be, a, a steak, if, if you think that works and it does work and it fuels your body, that's good. But probably from a performance point of view, don't don't fret or stress too much if you don't get that in because it's yeah. not going to affect your performance. You've done the work, you've trained hard, you've, you've eaten while leading into a race, leading into a game, a swim, whatever it might be. So um, you've got enough to worry about. If, if the restaurant doesn't have the pasta you want or whatever it might be, don't stress because it yeah. won't affect your performance. Yeah. That's no, probably that's, yeah, one less worry, I think. It's a good one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I think so many athletes do focus too much on making sure that every, every little box is ticked perfectly, yeah. but yeah. it doesn't have to be that way. No. Yeah. We, we've got players at the club do that. We've got a few players that have played good games, so they have to listen to a certain song at a certain time. Ah. And it's just crazy. Like, what happens if, you're, what happens if your iPhone runs out of battery? Mm -hmm. Is that going to affect your performance? Like it, it won't. So yeah. I understand there's superstitions and the yeah. lucky socks or lucky jocks, whatever it might be, is good. But um, but it's it, probably more likely to affect their performance if they don't have it because they've got that attachment to it rather than the fact that it just didn't, they didn't listen to that song. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's it's all part of the game, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're all very different. Yeah, ways, so exactly. Yeah. Whatever works, I guess. Yeah. The whole point of this, anyway. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, try not to think about this too much, yep. but first word that comes to mind, what does food mean to you? Uh, enjoyment. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I love eating, so um, yeah, it helps with performance, but I associate food with enjoyment, going out to a nice dinner or yeah. whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I love eating, so <laughs> it's good, <laughs> it's good, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Now, very important question, if you were stranded on a desert island, only three foods available, what would you want those three foods to be? And we'll assume that you don't have to back it up with a game the next day or something. Perfect. I would have bananas. Yeah. Um, I would have mum's uh, lasagna. And then I would have a bag of M&M Krispies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. How's that? Good choice, yeah. <laughs> I presume I can catch my own fish and make sushi and all that, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. probably available too. Yeah, true, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably those yeah. three, yeah, I enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Alright. Now, final words. Anything that you wish, I guess, Marcus or Junior Athlete knew, or perhaps um, if you feel like you're happy with your journey, then um, anything that you could pass on as a little bit of wisdom to some young athletes coming through? Probably wouldn't stay away from the tablespoons of sugars <laughs> on my cereal. Yeah. But I mean it was all part of the learning curve and maybe I wouldn't have got to here if I didn't do that. So um, oh, especially a young athlete coming through, just enjoy it, enjoy everything you're doing from training to competing to, to eating it, just enjoy the ride and then as you get more serious you'll, you'll have access to coaches and other professional athletes that can pass on advice and you can learn from, um, so the enjoyment's probably one for me um, from that and then yeah again if you, the other thing is if you find something that that helps you perform from a food point of view. So if it is a pasta the night before or whatever, um, and you've, you've raced well, uh, yeah, I think it's good though, stick to it. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. No worries, Lisa, thanks for having me. No.